Hey everybody, Arnaldo here broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I haven't taken you on a trip to a record show and the fall season record shows are upon us. And the first one that I visited this past weekend was in Astoria, Queens, that is New York City. It's called the Vinyl Revolution Record Show and typically happens once a year. And let's take a look. I compiled a video of the various tables, a flip through video of some of the crates, and afterwards we'll take a look at the haul, the records that I picked up at the record fair. So stay tuned for these records after the flip through and the tour video of the record fair, the Vinyl Revolution Record Show.
So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Vinyl Revolution record show. And now let me show you what I picked up. Some really good deals. Uh, all of the dealers that I purchased records from, all very, very negotiable. And let's start off with Vinyl Rescue Records. At that dealer, I picked up three albums, actually two albums and a 12 inch. First one starting is The The. This is a disinfected 12 inch record, uh, UK copy. I believe it was only released in the UK. 12 inch that I've been wanting to have. I had this on CD, but I'm kind of a completist when it comes to The The, who actually just released a new album after about 20 something years, 24 years. We'll talk about more, more about that on a future video. And that was the first pickup at the Vinyl Rescue Records along with a first UK pressing of Hunky Dory by David Bowie. I'm a huge David Bowie fan. Have this record in the box set format and maybe in one other configuration, but I'm slowly trying to get all the uh, UK originals or at least first pressings of, their, uh, of David Bowie's albums and couldn't pass up a great price on this David Bowie Hunky Dory. And something that I wanted to get because I may use this in a future comparison or shootout video, I uh, came across a first pressing of Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814, right? Yeah, I did get that right. I always sometimes mix up the date. Uh, US pressing, uh, still in shrink as you can see. So that was my haul at Vinyl Rescue Records. The next dealer I made a purchase from is a gentleman that actually purchased from last year at the New York WFMU Record Fair. His name is Clem and couldn't pass up the opportunity since I knew he was going to have a table at the record fair. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to stop by his table. He always has amazing selection of UK pressings and starting off with something that is not so difficult to find, but kind of difficult to find in a very good condition. I'm talking about a mono pressing of the Beatles for sale, first UK pressing. Very good shape. Maybe the cover is has a little bit of a crease here, but all in all, great copy. Happy to have found that. As you probably know, I am a Morrissey and Smith's completist, and there is a record that has been on my want list, on my Discogs want list, for quite a few years at the time when it came out in 2008, I believe. I picked up the CD and never seen the uh, vinyl version of this release. I'm talking about a compilation by Morrissey called Swords, which collects all of the B-sides, minus two, I believe, that were released during his later period, solo period, during the period starting from You Are the Quarry, uh, then going through Ringleader of the Tormentors and Years of Refusal. All those B-sides, minus two, are pretty much collected in this excellent compilation double album. Really happy to pick this one up. Not so easy to come across in the wild. And finally, to round off what my purchases at Clem's Table, I picked up a first UK pressing of the debut album by Blur called Leisure. No, I did not pay $7.99. I wish, <laughs> probably a little bit more than that. Uh, don't see it very often it, at record shows. And this was a very, very good copy in excellent condition, so could not hesitate to pick it up. Always loved the artwork on the Blur albums. Let's move on to the next dealer, who actually had a little spot on Clem's table, uh, maybe one or two crates. And he had probably one of the most sought after albums in the entire haul that I did and did a little bit of negotiating with this dealer. Uh, his name is Casey and he has a store, which I haven't visited yet actually in New York City, is called 690 Woodward Garage. You can probably follow him also on Instagram. And here it is, the Cocteau Twins for Calendar Cafe. UK copy, first pressing, uh, highly sought after, especially because around that time, the Cocteau Twins had passed on to Fontana, a different label from 4AD, and they released two albums on that label that didn't get a very huge pressing. Uh, we're talking about, 
I guess, 92 or 93. 93 actually when this album came out. So very happy to pick this one up for Calendar Cafe by the Cocteau Twins. The next album I picked up at a dealer's table, his name is Dave Hudden Records. Uh, I believe that's the name of it. And I found something that I didn't even know existed. It is a two LP version at 45 RPM of the Stone Roses debut album, self-titled The Stone Roses. This one came out, I had to do actually some research on Discogs because when I saw this version, which is a double version, double LP version, let me show you the gatefold. And it is actually numbered. So it, it piqued my interest. I pulled up Discogs and I found out what it was about. Uh, quickly glanced some of the reviews, which highly recommended this version over the single 33 LP, which came out in 1989. This was released only two years after, in 1991. From what I understand, it was released mostly f with, not in a very big run, but mostly for the DJ market because they were spinning a lot of 12 inch singles at 45 RPM. And anyway, it sounds, it does sound fantastic. I don't have an original 33 RPM, so I'm very happy with this purchase. It was actually a very pleasant surprise. The Stone Roses, debut album. And the very last purchase of the day was a record that actually I already own, but I don't own the very first version, although it's a very early pressing. The very first version of Harry Nilsson's Aerial Ballet included as the first track on the album, Daddy's Song. I don't remember what the reason was why it had to be withdrawn, and it was reissued and ever since has always been reissued without that first song called Daddy's Song. Very happy to come across a copy with that song on it. I have never seen it before. Could not hesitate to pick this one up. Very good price. I got this at the Laundromat Records. So here it is, Aerial Ballet by Harry Nelson with Daddy's Song included. And that wraps it up for my trip at the Vinyl Revolution record show in Astoria, Queens. There'll be more record shows coming up. Uh, next big one is WFMU in New York City. That'll happen in November. I hope you enjoyed my showings. I hope you enjoyed the flip through and the tour of all the dealers tables. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and you want to be notified. There is a little button there that you can click on for uh, notifications and to subscribe to the channel, which is free. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.